last week we uh, started our discussion on the monetary policy so that uh, we started our discussion uh, by uh, seeing the difference between different monetary policy frameworks and i told you that uh, uh, now we are uh, following uh, here that hope that you remember the difference between that uh, monetary targeting framework inflation targeting framework and flexible inflation targeting framework so at present uh, this is the monetary po policy framework uh, that the central bank is following so uh, this the, there are few slides that have uh, added into the presentation anyway the presentation that uh, i think that ibs cell has already shared with you all is actually the old version so anyhow after completing the topic that i will uh, share with you the new presentations okay so that you can see all the new points that i have added into the presentation in the new material that you will get on right uh, get uh, in due course here you can see that central bank conducts its monetary policy within an enhanced monetary policy framework with features of both monetary targeting and inflation flexible inflation targeting so that here uh, that we discuss about the three different type of monetary policy framework but at present the focus is more on the flexible inflation targeting right but it doesn't mean that it's purely only that but it's still that we can see that uh, some features uh, of the monetary targeting framework also still we can see there okay so uh, here in the picture that you can see what are the monetary policy instrument uh, uh, under the disposal of the central bank last week also that i show you uh, some of the uh, policy instruments are qualitative and some are quantitative likewise that we discussed about the key policy instruments okay other than that the, the, there are some direct instrument as well that uh, oh, you will see what are those in uh, today discussions also I'll, i'm going to mention and in the next discussion also that we can see because basically we can identify that all the instrument un, under uh, we can categorize actually them like indirect uh, in monetary policy tools and direct monetary policy tools so here that uh, in the green box that you can see that uh, the, in this monetary policy framework, what are the uh, monetary pol policy tools are available. So uh, accordingly that you can see by uh, using those monetary policy instrument that central bank is uh, trying to achieve that last week I told you how that uh, monetary policy uh mechanism is linked with the aggregate demand and how it is going to uh, tame the inflation okay so here you can see the path of uh, the process the implementation of the monetary policy initially targeted the interbank overnight interest rate okay average weighted call money rate that is what awcmr means the uh, under the, this new uh, flexible inflation targeting framework, the operating target is the average weighted call money rate. Okay, so uh, that we can see as a key uh, feature of the uh, new infl flexible inflation targeting framework. Okay, so uh, it is the key uh, feature of this inflation targeting framework uh, and then we can see uh, at the intermediate level we can see the broad money supply is also there right under the uh, monetary targeting framework actually uh, the target was that basically the target uh, uh, was on monetary aggregates but here also that we can see at the intermediate level that uh, through the operating targeting then uh, that uh, there is a, a, a target over the broad money supply as well okay so initially the target is the interbank overnight interest rate 
by maintaining the liquidity to influence short term interest rate so the last week we discuss i think uh, basically about the open market operations we discuss and also that uh, we discuss about the policy interest rates likewise that we saw how the central bank intervened to the uh, short term money markets right so not only in the short term money markets almost all the money markets uh, that we can see the influence of the central bank okay uh, overnight uh, call money market is there okay so that uh, repo market is there uh, foreign exchange market also there so we can see that uh, the central bank can influence uh, in different manner the in these markets uh, especially that influence the interest rate short term interest rate and then influence the other interest rate in the economy the last week also i described how it happens uh, because in the uh, short term money markets we can see that all the commercial banks are the players so basically whatever the interest rates are impact on the commercial bank businesses then only these market rates are uh, transmitting to the other markets okay so we can see that they are transmitting them to the capital market uh, loanable fund market likewise that we can see the transmission affecting the behavior of borrowers and lenders economic activity and ultimately the rate of inflation inflation so that is the process so you can see it is not a very simple kind of a process and also there are different stages are there in the uh, what that uh, implementation process or the transmitting mechanism so but basically you have to understand that what is the operating target you have to remember uh, uh, by uh, using policy instruments what the central bank can do central bank can uh, influence the short term interest rate okay so the central bank is going to uh, uh, influence the short term interest rate but what is the initial target in the bank overnight interest rate uh, the actually it is the weighted average call money rate okay so that uh, it is there and then economic agents uh, adjust their economic behavior in line with the changes in their expectation following the announcement of central bank monetary policy decisions and its operation so before the monetary policy the our topic was on that basically uh, the how the central bank operations can influence the economic activities right uh, we started our discussion on the monetary policy last week but before that we discuss about that as well so you know uh, how central bank can uh, control the inflation at the same time that interest rate and also the inflation uh, in indicators index also those are impact on the expectations of the economic agents so if we assume that all the people are rational they always take their decisions uh, based on the uh, behavior or the changes in those macroeconomic indicators okay okay so that uh, we can see that any of the monetary policy instruments right by using any of the monetary policy instrument uh, by implementing the monetary policy what the central bank is basically doing the central bank try to manage the liquidity level in the market why to maintain operating targets in the desired range as per the prevailing monetary policy stance so what means the prevailing monetary stance which means that time to time that we can uh, we can see that uh, central bank is go going to change the monetary policy stance so uh, last week also i mentioned that very recently central bank uh, increased the policy interest rates
so it means that central bank has started to tie up the monetary policy okay so uh, that then what is the uh, responsibility of the central bank is to uh, maintain okay so the maintain that policy stance so how uh, as we discussed last week that you saw uh, how central bank uh, predetermined the policy interest rates and by doing so how influence the uh, short term money market interest rate to behave in between that corridor okay so in order to uh, uh, maintain the market interest rate especially the that as you saw that the the initial target is that short term interest rate no so in the basically it is the average call money market rate so in the average call money that it is the overnight uh, call money market so that rate should be there in between the policy interest rates okay so and uh, also we discuss about the uh, link between the fund availability and the cost of the fund when there are more liquidity in the market uh, there is a, a tendency for the interest rates to come down if there is a shortage of liquidity we know that uh, there is a pressure for the interest rates to go up it is like that so likewise uh, maintaining the or managing the liquidity level that central bank try to maintain the operating target which is the short term interest rate in order to uh, maintain the uh, monetary policy stance so at this moment we know that what are the rates so that central bank try to maintain the uh, market interest rates uh, between these two rates okay so that is the process so monetary policy implementation it starts with the monetary board ah uh, here i couldn't discuss uh, this thing last week that's why i included here so uh, how actually the monetary board take the monetary policy decisions okay i i, I told you that uh, that there is a set of departments are there uh, in the central bank uh with respect to implementing the monetary policy okay uh, under the uh, i think uh, under the first cluster that we discuss at the time that we discuss about the uh, departments that uh, i hope that you remember that we discuss about some departments which are come under that cluster which is uh, uh, directly serve uh, to maintain the or to achieve the uh, first key objective of the central bank to maintain the uh, economic and price stability so at that time uh, we discuss about the key activities of the uh, relevant department as well so there are set of department especially that economic research department is there so that uh, these uh, departments are working uh, on this subject but there is a committee is there always to uh, analyze all the inputs given by these departments and then they recommend the monetary board and then the monetary board decide what should be the monetary policy stance and then after monetary policy decision came okay so monetary board monetary monetary board has to approve uh, what is the monetary uh, measures monetary policy measures should be then the daily basis that uh, there is a committee called Mar that market operation committee so they have to decide uh, how should be the daily operations in order to Uh, maintain that monetary policy stance so accordingly that monetary policy implementation will happen that they meet every day to decide what should be the central bank actions on mon money market and domestic foreign exchange market as well okay so that uh, 
that uh, i think that under the uh, that uh, key or the compulsory subject on uh, monetary policy that you will uh, discuss everything there are uh, more technical uh, uh, elements are also there right but here our focus is to understand what is the monetary policy and how it is going to impact on economic activities okay because there is a separate compulsory subject for you uh, to learn about the monetary policy in detail covering all the technical uh, aspects of it okay but anyhow that uh, without having the overall idea that no point of telling what is the implication and all that's why i try to describe this all so now we can see that in the implementation process basically the uh, the responsibility is to manage the level of liquidity in the market okay so how the central bank can manage the market liquidity hmm? what is market liquidity so here i have mentioned that that it is basically the balances held by commercial banks on their settlement accounts with the central bank so here that uh, that the role of the commercial banks are really really important okay in implementation process of the monetary policy because they uh, directly uh, involve in all the activities and also that in 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 the money market and all that they have the role to play because central bank is dealing with the commercial banks okay that's how it is happening so that uh, the market liquidity is refers to the balances held by commercial banks on their settlement account with the central bank that, and i uh, hope that you remember we discuss about the the uh, under the roles of the role of the central bank that we discuss uh, the uh, central bank act as the bank to the bankers so all the banks that uh, they are they have their settlement account with the central bank and uh, central bank facilitate to uh uh settle uh, among the banks as well using their accounts the banks maintain cash balances with the central bank for the purpose of meeting their day to day uh, day to day obligation settlement purposes as well as to satisfy the statutory reserve requirement that we are going to discuss later uh, so for two purposes that those uh, and the The, the commercial banks uh, uh, settlement accounts are important so by uh, by analyzing the positions of their settlement accounts that central bank can get an idea about what is the liquidity situation in that market not the overall whole market uh, in the economy but in the short term markets okay so then Uh, what the central bank is doing the central bank intervenes to manage liquidity in the domestic money market if there is a excess liquidity the banking system is considered in excess liquidity on a given day if it is cumulative aggregate deposit balances with the central bank is higher than the balance that it would need to maintain in the reserve account under ssr so uh, uh i think that we didn't discuss it about the uh, statutory reserve ratio so that we are going to discuss about that today so you will see that it is a, uh, a statutory requirement for all the commercial banks to maintain uh, 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 a portion of their deposits liabilities in the central bank okay so that uh, that they can meet that obligation if they have excess liquidity enough liquidity if they have a shortage that they cannot meet that requirement because that that requirement that they have given a, a period of time to meet that requirement now that uh, uh, srr is 4% okay so that uh, in order to uh, meet that 4% requirement that they no need to keep their balances or the deposit with the central bank every day during a period that they have to uh, maintain that 4% amount so that is how uh, it is happening 
but daily basis that central bank can monitor uh, the liquidity position of a bank by analyzing the balance uh, in these accounts right so that if that uh, uh, as mentioned here that uh, cumulative aggregate deposit balances which means that all the com commercial banks together so that uh, they all have uh, uh, that uh, settlement accounts that they are no so that uh, the central bank can take the cumulative aggregate deposit balances and if it is higher than the balance okay that they have to be maintained under the uh, statutory reserve ratio requirement so then central bank can decide there is excess liquidity okay so that uh, it's opposite uh, it's op uh, opposite side is the way that central bank can decide there is a deficit liquidity in the market shortage of liquidity okay so that which means that uh, that cumulative aggregate deposit balance is lower than the balance that all the uh, commercial banks to maintain uh, on their ssr ratio so it is how that central bank uh, monitor the liquidity position in the uh, domestic money market okay so if there are sufficient amount of market liquidity that uh, there are there is nothing wrong with that okay but if there is a excess or a shortage of liquidity is there it will be problematic if there is a sufficient amount of market liquidity is there which means that uh, that's the level of market liquidity uh, is sufficient okay uh, it is actually that uh, that uh, sufficient amount of market liquidity is required it is necessary why to ensure the smooth functioning of the financial system and the economy or otherwise that that commercial banks that they cannot uh, meet their obligation to their customers so in the case we know that always that public they come to the commercial banks to uh, meet their financial needs so that uh, there should be uh, enough liquidity there or otherwise the other way around that what will happen to the interest rate if there is a shortage of liquidity that interest rate is the cost of fund right so that there is a shortage of liquidity means that no enough supply so that interest rate will go up so central bank provides liquidity depending on the need of the financial system so that always the daily basis central bank monitor the liquidity position in the market and decide whether there is a adequate or the sufficient amount of market liquidity or whether there is a shortage or excess okay accordingly uh, when a bank is in a liquidity deficit position so that uh, if the overall position is a deficit right some of the banks are in a deficit position so accordingly that uh, one of the bank that they are uh, they at a deficit position liquidity deficit so what will happen then hmm? so reducing lending to limit any new pressure on liquidity uh, and borrowing or by reducing deposits kept at the commercial bank this can happen so either they can borrow from the central bank or they can reduce deposit kept at the central bank which means under the ssr also that because at the end of the day that uh, commercial banks know what is their position if they are having a de deficit that they cannot uh, meet that uh, reserve requirement as well because they have given a period to meet that uh, requirement so that they can either uh, reduce the deposits that they are going to keep with the central bank on that particular day as well as that they can borrow okay we we discuss about the a standing lending facility rate as well so that that banks can do that as well okay but if a bank is frequently borrow from the central bank okay it is not a good indicator 
okay which means that we, that uh, central bank see that there are some difficulties that uh, the bank is facing uh, in financing their uh, needs in the market which means that they are not in a position to uh, maintain their uh, assets base as well okay compared to the level of uh, liabilities okay so in the same way if there is a surplus bank what they can do they can either invest their sur surplus in the bank which means that they can deposit or even they can lend in the overnight or short term markets that we discuss now at the time that we discuss about the open market operation that we saw okay and also in the uh, overnight market as well that we see uh, that the bank the actually that overnight call money market is the market where all the commercial banks are uh, doing their transactions so that surplus surplus bank can they they, they can lend to the uh, deficit banks okay so we can see that there are two option for the surplus banks and also for the deficit bank in that sense either they can uh, lend or borrow from another commercial banks or even they can use the facility available uh, in the central bank already we discussed about that last week uh, so what next uh, so then we discuss already the monetary policy tools so anyhow here i have to mention that the role of the market operations committee after they decided whether there is the excess or the shortage liquidity in the market they decide how what is the way that they are going to absorb liquidity or to inject liquidity into the market there are different instruments are there so that they have to decide what is the most uh, proper way of absorbing liquidity in case there is a excess liquidity or if there is a def uh, deficit or the shortage of liquidity how the central bank should inject liquidity to the market so that uh, at the same time what is the amount what is the amount and the type of tenor that it means that there are different type of instruments uh, so what is the type of the instrument instrument and also uh, the time period or the maturity of the instruments this all because when the central bank is going to uh, issue a law that uh, very overnight basis also it can happen and also for seven days like that uh, the maturity period can be different from instrument to instruments so that uh, it, accordingly we can see that if there is a shortage if the central bank is going to uh, inject Uh, liquidity into the market okay uh, no let's see the other way around that the central bank is going to absorb liquidity okay by selling securities if it is going to uh, be a seven days maturity the instrument with a seven days maturity that uh, at the time that central bank going to purchase that securities uh, again that money will go into the Uh, market so it is like that so like that's why that uh, this committee has to decide the amount and also the type and the uh, time period of the instruments okay so uh, okay that all are just listening so far no any questions right okay can you all uh, understand the stuff that we are talking hmm? any problem so if you have any uh, gray area you can ask okay i try my best to explain you in a simple language okay so the last excuse week actually me. yeah excuse me madam in this diagram uh, what is the average uh, rate uh, you introduce that in the previous previous here. slides yes here this is average, average weighted call money in, rate okay yeah, in so here instances, that this rate is sorry in what instances yeah, in what instances uh, that rate is used madam um uh, yeah last week also that we discuss actually that uh, we discuss about the graph here so you can see here that uh, and this is that uh, this is that uh, the short term uh, 
market okay money market where the commercial banks are interact okay so here that this is the open market operation so that uh, that uh, I, I i'm not sure whether you have learned about the markets but i hope that uh, you have learned about uh, at the the first level right so that uh, uh, there is a market, it is a short term money market, which is called overnight uh, money market, where all the commercial banks are uh, interact to meet their, uh, uh, to manage their uh, liquidity. Okay, so as we discussed a while ago, also that I mentioned you know, some of the banks that they can end up with a shortage of liquidity or some banks that they can end up with the uh, surplus of liquidity okay so that if bank has a surplus that they can lend to the other bank so that in the overnight call money market actually the overnight that the all the transactions are happening the settlement days is, is like the next day right uh, so in this market the daily basis that th this is ongoing operations so that uh, the, the daily basis that 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 time to time that interest rates are going up and down because there are some banks are coming and going like that it is a that in the in the let's say that it is like a good and service market as well okay so when you go to the uh, many market or somewhere where the vegetable sellers are there okay so they are coming to the market so that uh, that they time to time that they can see what is the uh, uh, the price of a particular vegetable it depends on how much vegetables are coming into the market and also how much uh, uh, people wants to buy that because it is that demand and the supply of beans or something the same way that for the funds also that time to time this market rate is going up and down so that uh, that uh, in order to get the idea because that central bank's objective is actually to control that market interest rate between the policy interest rate decided by the uh, central bank so which is called the interest rate corridor so at present these are the two rates okay so they decided by the center these are called the policy interest rate so that central bank can oversee the market now so the central bank also uh, can see all the operations in the market so now central bank know what are the, the level of market interest rates so daily basis that central bank can decide that uh, what is the market rates are so that based on the different different market rates you know how we can uh, uh, calculate the weighted average rate okay so this is the way that the central bank can get that idea out of the uh, overall operations of the market so it's time to time that market rate is changing okay so that what is the weighted average rate so if the weighted average is higher than the uh, that this corridor okay so that it means that interest rate is going high and high which means that there is a shortage of liquidity in the market that it is not good because why that uh, by by uh, declare that by uh, uh, deciding the monetary policy stance the central bank actually that uh, the central bank's objective is to maintain the interest rate between this okay so now you have to understand that the liquidity and the interest rate these two are always that you can see when there is a higher liquidity interest rates are lower when there is a low level of liquidity that interest rate is automatically it will increase okay so that last week i described this graph okay so that is what so that uh, that here you can see that uh, that operating target is the average weighted call money rate because why the central bank uh, at the time that central bank uh, 
decide this is the monetary policy stance of the central bank by uh, deciding the policy interest rate then central bank uh, actually uh, maintain or guide the or control the short term markets okay short term market interest rate uh, to align with this policy rates okay that's what you have to understand is that clear enough clear madam thank you okay so we are we so we discuss about that and we discuss that point and here we are so that uh, okay so that then uh, this committee considered the assessment of daily market liquidity positions okay so we i, I already discuss uh, how it uh, that central bank can do that okay that because that settlement accounts maintained by the commercial banks that uh, that it uh, that cumulative balances are there so based on that uh, the balance positions that central bank can decide that uh, that always that daily basis that central bank is doing that as assessment uh, then forecast of the daily market liquidity and market development and the policy that here you can see that not only that that this committee has a very uh, huge responsibility actually because that based on their assessments that monetary daily monetary operations are happening okay so that you have to understand that in this process monetary policy process that the first first thing is that the central bank decide, have to decide first central bank has to decide first what kind of a monetary policy should we follow whether it is going to be a flexible one or a very uh, tight one okay uh, i told you on what basis that central bank take those decisions basically that central bank uh, uh, th this is actually the framework is called that flexible inflation targeting no? so that central bank is that last week we di we discussed everything but anyhow that i am repeating uh, to you to get a get uh, more right so that uh, we discuss that how central bank decide uh, whether uh, monetary policy uh, to be easy or uh, to be tightened okay so based on the trends in the inflation okay and also that the forecast of the daily that here it is the first thing and the next thing is actually that uh, that that monetary policy decision is there then central bank has to implement the monetary policy uh, measures using the different type of monetary policy instruments okay so at that time central bank has to basically central bank has to manage the liquidity positions okay so that uh, base daily basis based on the balances of the commercial banks uh, settlement account central bank can assess the market liquidity position and also central bank can forecast the daily market liquidity so based on the balances forecast the market liquidity because uh, it is kind of a proxy central bank is using here and market developments and the policy environment so that central bank can see what is going in the market because when there is a, the overall balance is uh, lower than the required or the expected level of balance okay that central bank can uh, forecast there is a uh, shortage liquidity shortage is there it is like that okay so the monetary policy instruments at the central bank can be classified as direct and indirect instruments okay so that uh, that here we can see what are the direct instruments uh, that uh, that central bank is having the authority that and also the regulatory powers to give instructions or the guidelines for the commercial banks uh, to uh, impose a credit ceiling which means that this is the amount of uh, credit that you should be give 
and also the interest rate ceiling. Time to time, central bank is doing that. The pandemic, uh, during the pandemic uh, situation also that we see, because one of the reason is that uh, sometimes that uh, the market conditions are changing in a rapid manner. The good example is this pandemic, that health crisis. So that uh, we saw that that uh, it, 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 it is actually that unpredictable situation. Uh, but normally that the monetary policy instruments, when central bank implement this monetary policy measures that it will take some time to transmit into the uh, real market. Okay, so uh, in between that we know if there are any repercussions due to the conditions in the market at that time central bank has to uh, use that regulatory power directly uh, either by uh, uh, giving guidelines or the circulars, issuing circulars to the commercial banks to give credits to the customers or not give not going to give credits to the customers so even central bank can urge commercial banks to give credit to the customers so the commercial bank promotes the commercial banks to uh, lend more and more sometimes that if there is a very inflationary situation at that time central bank can ask commercial banks to stop all the lending for a moment okay so that it is not happening all the time in a special circumstances it also can happen and also the interest rate savings means for a time that uh, the interest rate that we saw that uh, by uh, conducting the monetary policy that actually the central bank is uh, influence the market interest rate but the uh, immediate target is that short term uh, interest rate in the money market so we know that that process will take some time sometimes to transmit that changes into the uh, market interest rate okay so that we, we can say now uh, let's say that uh, central bank uh, started uh, to uh, follow a very flexible uh, monetary policy stance because of the pandemic situation we know that uh, the market interest rate also that uh, they, they, they got lower no so that now the uh, present also that we can see that the interest rates in the markets are uh, i think substantially lower okay but very recently central bank again increased the policy interest rate but overnight that we cannot see that uh, impact we cannot see any impact in the uh, market interest rates especially for the loanable funds basically when you are going to the bank to borrow or even when we are going to deposit money fixed deposits or a saving deposit that we cannot see that change it is not happen that much uh, easily or within a very shorter period we cannot see that uh, change will happen but it takes some time but we know that in a special circumstance or in that uh, pandemic situation that central bank no even though central bank is going to reduce the interest rates it will take some time to uh, transcend to the market so that's why central bank uh, give some guidelines for the commercial banks to reduce the interest rate for this this type of uh, lending or even for the some of the you you may all also have experience in your transactions with the bank and so many concessions were given to the customers through the commercial banks and the other institution as well because why that central bank uh, uh, implements some direct instrument or the direct measures that those are there okay so in contrast indirect instrument mainly work through the market okay via central bank's own balance sheet or by adjustment of underlying demand for any uh, supply of bank reserves so here are the uh, monetary policy instrument so that this instrument when the central bank is using this instrument it is not like that that direct instrument that 
central bank is uh, issuing guidelines to the commercial bank so directly it is happening but indirect instruments that actually the the, the things will change based on the market forces basically the money market and then the the rate will transfer to the other markets that capital market and the uh, loanable fund market like that so it is like that so indirect instruments that what will happen when central bank is used using those indirect instrument uh, that central bank work with the uh, money markets so that uh, central bank balance sheet can be changed which means that uh, we know that uh, <coughs> when central bank is going to inject money that uh, the currency so currency is a liability so that we can see the in the balance sheet of the central bank that liability side will go up okay so when central bank is injecting so in case that central bank is absorbing currency okay so the other way around so likewise there are some adjustment can be happen to the central bank balance sheet as well so at the time that we discuss about the central bank balance sheets that we saw there can be a cost of uh, uh, implementing monetary policy to the central bank okay but uh, we discuss uh, you go and see the notes that you will see what are the uh, the implications on the balance sheet of the central bank when central bank is going to uh, implement the monetary policy okay so uh, these are the uh, the monetary policy instruments so they, the, the, these are considered as indirect instrument now you should know why they are called indirect instruments okay so that's what i wanted to discuss with you in addition to the points that we discussed last week and uh, then we discuss about the operation uh, open market operations that already you know that at what point the central bank has to purchase securities and sell securities okay so it is based on the, uh, the level of liquidity market liquidity levels uh, so this is uh, how it is happening so this is the way central bank is intervening in the uh, open market operations okay so that uh, you can see uh, so uh, the central bank uh, sell or purchase securities uh, after deciding whether to inject or absorb uh, liquidity from the market okay central bank sell security means what selling security so the central bank is going to uh, demand funds from the market that's why that demand uh, line is going up okay last week i think that two times that i described this graph okay but anyhow that uh, you can see here that in uh, steering the overnight inter overnight interbank interest rates okay the central bank uses different instrument under open market operations to supply or absorb liquidity in the volume required to facilitate maintenance of interbank market interest rate on the desired path one ask this question right so and this is what it is so that uh, now you can see there are two type of uh, things are there uh, that actually that market liquidity is uh, maintained or managed by the central bank why central bank needs to keep the interest rate at a particular level that's here in the graph also you can see that it's steering the overnight interbank interest rate so the overnight inter interbank interest rate that's what the objective actually that central bank use different instrument and open market operations so different instruments means there are different type of uh, uh, securities that uh, that uh, central bank can use uh, there are li list of things are there okay not only the securities there are list of instruments are there so anyhow that central bank 
by using any of these instruments, central bank try to supply you absorb liquidity. So accordingly, that central bank can control the volume of liquidity in the market. So it facilitate to maintain the interbank market interest rate on the desired path. Desired path means actually it should be in between that interest rate corridor. And also that uh, interest rate, if there is a high volatility, it is also not good. So that by controlling the, the volume of liquidity, that central bank can uh, steer the overnight interbank interest rate. It is the overall story actually. And so then we discuss about the policy interest rates. Okay. And then we discuss about the uh, interest rate corridor as well. Uh, interest rate corridor is specified in terms of a lower bond and upper bound, lower bound and the upper bound of interest rates and used to achieving the intended inflation path. Okay, so that uh, we are going to achieve the achieve that uh, target inflation rate under the flexible inflation targeting framework. The ultimate objective is to maintain the inflation uh, at a uh, predicted level that there is a target level actually not the predicted level but the target level what is the target level at present that central bank declared it right so that why because when central bank declared it central bank giving some signals for the, uh, the economic agents that inflation is in the, in the future inflation is going to be this much okay so that's why then central bank has to maintain it or anyhow central bank has to achieve that target okay so then now you know the links between those so that is standing deposit facility race you already know what is it okay here in the uh, slide also that i've given the definition uh, and that uh, the lending facility rate Okay, so the lending facility rate is the high rate, six percent. This, these are the current rates, and uh, the deficit facility rate is here. So I told you when the commercial banks are uh, interact with the other commercial banks uh, by demanding and supplying funds in this market, so it will decide the market interest rate. Okay, so that uh, central bank oversee the operations of this market. If there is a higher interest rate or the lower interest rate, that then central bank can uh, intervene to this market by conducting open market operations to change the volume of liquidity in the market. Okay, so now you have to have that understanding. Uh, between the interest rate and the volume of liquidity okay so last week we discussed okay so likewise that uh, central bank by these two interest rate they are used as central bank signaling mechanism on the monetary policy stance so that that it is that cent when central bank decide these two rates that means that uh, because it was earlier uh, uh, before the recent uh, change of the monetary policy, SDFR was 4.5 and this was 5.5. So we can see that uh, the corridor has been uplifted, which means that now the policy interest rates are higher than the earlier rate, 50% that, that actually it has been increased by 50% basis points. So which means that central bank tighten up the monetary policy. So that we can see that it is actually signaling, signal that it gives the signal for the market players as well that there is a, they can expect that there is an increasing trend in the market interest rate in the near future. So accordingly, that they will take their decisions. Okay, so that's how the policy interest rates that you can see here how these policy interest rates are going to impact on the short term interest rate because you know that uh, 
that this the in the short term market that these rates are rate are not uh, probably not going higher than this rate or lower than this rate why yeah, last week also we discussed that if the bank has the uh, facility uh, to have funds okay at 6% no bank is going to uh, borrow at this much of a higher rate from the other bank it's in the same way if there is a way okay if there is a channel for the commercial banks to deposit their excess uh, liquidity at 5% rate no one of the uh, surplus bank is going to uh, lend for a other or the deficit bank at this much of a lower rate so likewise that always that these forces are uh, that uh, the banks are influenced by these two uh, policy rates okay to take their decisions and accordingly we can see in between these two rates always the short term market rate will fluctuate okay so it is that and okay so that uh, I think that now we have discussed about the uh, policy interest rates and all, also about the open uh, market operations. Okay, so that here actually so far I have done kind of a summary because last week we discussed about these two policy um, uh, tools in details, but uh, I thought that it is better to discuss and give you some more idea because sometimes in the past papers, uh, the questions are like that you have to have a broad idea about that because sometimes that the questions are not that much of a straightforward so that you should you have to have that uh, capacity to understand the question first and the next uh, instrument is the the bank rate uh, at the time that uh, i think that we discussed about this can anyone remember that we discussed right this slide also that we discussed last week i think that we have to dis start our discussion on this the statutory reserve ratio okay can anyone please help me whether we have discussed that remember yes from srr only we have to do this mm -hmm. Uh, right this one we have to do okay so that uh, i already mentioned that commercial banks that they need to hold a base of reserve assets at cent central bank in their settlement account which is actually a ratio uh, of the overall value of their demand deposits so that uh, uh, that statutory reserve ratio at present it is four percent the amount that they have to maintain is determined as a percentage of total deposits liabilities of the commercial banks. So 4% of their deposit liabilities that they have to uh, keep with the central bank in their settlement accounts. That is what the requirement. Uh, this is actually considered as a prudential requirement as well because why it helps to preserve the solvency of banks to face any contingent liquidity requirement. If a bank is going to face any liquidity uh, shortage or any problem, uh, even without having any uh, collateral or the assets to use as collateral, that they are in a trouble. So that's why uh, this is actually we can uh, consider it as a prudential requirement to preserve the solvency of the bank as well. Okay, other than it is a very important uh, monetary policy tool. The SSR is a cushion to absorb contingent liquidity shock. Commercial bank can use the balance of deposits after making reservations to meet reserve requirement. After commercial banks keep the reserves in the central bank, the commercial bank can use the, the balance of their deposits. But you have to remember that the commercial bank has that, that they have the special ability to create uh, credit upon this uh the balances okay the ability of commercial banks to offer checking accounts 
that only the commercial banks have that uh, privilege to provide the facility of uh, uh, what uh, that current accounts okay so the demand deposits and so the demand deposit and extend credit for borrowers with checking writing facilities uh, that's how the commercial bank can create credit or uh, liquidity other than the currency or the money issued by the central bank or injected by the central bank into the system that commercial bank can add uh, bank money it is also considered as highly liquid asset the checks okay so that is the possibility of the commercial bank to create credit okay so uh, what is the important aspect of the ssr is now that ssr allowed the central bank to influence the credit creation capacity of the commercial banks because why that commercial banks create credit on what basis based on the that the de demand uh, deposits that they have okay that based on the money available to them only that they can uh, new facility for their customers to have open accounts or that uh, checking accounts so when they have low uh, uh, level of liquidity in the hand that the capacity of uh, increasing the credit that uh, or the credit creation process also can be limited okay so that what it is so that that uh, when central bank can increase the uh, statutory reserve requirement that credit creation capacity of the commercial bank is low so it is reduce the money available for the banks to support its credit creation process that's what the reason so when they have more money available they will create more and more credits okay so uh, it is the link between that ssr and the uh, liquidity level in the market so ssr increasing means that uh, there is a uh, limited capacity for the commercial banks to create credit so the liquidity uh, also not going to be increased but that when the ssr is very low they can create more and more credit so the liquidity will increase level of the liquidity will increase in the market the central bank can raise the ssr to tighten the monetary policy and lower uh, if for the policy to be easy so that's how that uh, ssr rate is determined by the uh, central bank if central bank is going to tighten up the monetary policy that ssr will increase very recently it has been increased from 2% to 4% earlier also it was 2% before the pandemic so during the pandemic central bank eased the monetary policy so all the policy interest rates uh, they have come down but uh, now that again uh, central bank has started to tight up the monetary policy so that it has increased from 2% to 4% okay so uh, now you can see uh that uh, how this instrument helps central bank to uh, manage the liquidity level in the market uh, and the one point is if any one of the bank is failed to maintain the required reserves during the reserve maintenance period they are liable to pay interest rate at the rate of one tenth of one percent per day to cbsl uh, that uh, I didn't uh, discuss with you the way that they have to maintain uh, the reserves uh, during a given period. I hope that uh, under the key subject that you are going to learn on monetary policy, uh, you will have an opportunity to discuss because that uh, it will again take some more time to describe the way that the commercial bank has to that have to uh, maintain their deposits that SSR requirement with the central bank. Actually, uh, as I told you that they now need to uh, maintain or keep or uh, meet that uh, requirement at once. They have given a period of time to meet that requirement. Okay. Uh, so that the next one is the moral suasion. Last week, one, uh, one of you asked about this. So uh, I told you that we are going to discuss so that uh, 
now we are discussing so the moral solution is that range of informal requests and pressures that the central bank can may exert over banks uh, that uh, so far we discuss about different type of monetary policy tools actually they are come under the uh, quantitative measures but here we can see this is the uh, qualitative policy measure so we can see there is a moral act of uh, persuasion appeal to influence or changing behavior of the commercial bank so that we can see uh, this is uh, a different approach uh, central bank try to achieve its objective through a dialogue and cordial relationship with commercial banks rather than accessing its authoritative powers through the policy instruments so that uh, being the uh, uh, policy Yes. 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 The recent uh, exchange rate uh, reduces example for this one. Am I correct? Uh, that recent uh, no, actually. What, what, what is the that uh, because that very recently central bank reduced all the policy rates. Uh, these are common. No, 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 exchange rate the request to reduce up to two hundred three. Yes, yes, it is like that. Yes, that's true. So here I didn't uh, touch that much on of uh, actions that central bank is taking over the uh, uh, exchange rate stability. But again, it is also come under the monetary policy uh, because that uh, I think but I mentioned about uh, that when we discuss about the uh, price stability, it is not only the a domestic uh, aspect but also the external value of the rupee as well which represent the uh, exchange rate so that whatever the intervention of the central bank in the uh, forex domestic foreign exchange market also come under the uh, monetary policy and one more thing that uh, when central bank to increase the or oh, increase the level of liquidity rupee liquidity in the market even central bank can uh, do it by intervening the foreign exchange market as well. How that when the central bank is going to buy dollars from the uh, foreign exchange market, central bank can inject rupees into the market. It is all, it is also uh, one way. Okay, so uh, in additionally, I, I tell you that uh, told you that uh, as he uh, mentioned that yes. Uh, it is also there and also that we can consider it as a direct measure because uh, you we discuss already that credit ceilings right uh, and also that interest rate ceiling caps and all so it is also like that uh, it is a direct measure central bank has taken and also uh, we can see that there are uh, discussions are going on with the commercial banks because they are also having a trouble because uh, their uh, uh, dollar liquidity level is really low so that is one of the re reason so but anyhow that uh, I think uh, I'm not pretty sure that I discuss uh, that matter matter in this class but uh, uh, sometimes that we can see central bank just allow the market forces to determine the rates Sometimes, because why that it is going to be more uh, realistic, then that uh, prices will be adjusted in a more realistic way, uh, uh, and also they will they will uh, align with the commensurate improvement in the economy. Okay, so but time to time that uh, in this uh, that we know that we are uh, we are in a very critical situation now so we can see that uh, central bank is uh, is taking all the possible measures to address the situation so anyhow that uh, uh, we are going to discuss about the recent policy measures of the central bank uh, so we can discuss about this type of uh, recent policy measures has been taken by the central bank uh, so at that time we can see uh, what are the problems and what are the measures and what will be the consequences. 
so that it, it's worth to discuss because uh, normally that uh, in the question paper uh, you can see that uh, it always asks about the contemporary uh, that they, they raise the question uh, relating to the com contemporary development as well so that uh, you have to Mm, you you now you can use the knowledge that you gain uh, in the class as well that you have to read and that uh, then you have to link the practical scenarios with the uh, points that we discussed in the class as well so that uh, in the coming discussions that we can have uh, we can uh, discuss or analyze some uh, sort of uh, policy measures have been taken by the central bank with respect to the monetary policy and also especially uh, uh, regard, relating to the exchange rate as well okay so okay so that uh, the central bank conducts regular meeting with the officials of the commercial banks to update about the contemporary developments in the financial sector with a special reference to the banking sector and the economy as a whole uh, because that uh, all the banks that they can see from their point of view but the central bank that the central bank can oversee the overall development in the market so central bank can uh, discuss about the commercial banks uh, because that central bank can uh, because the bank that commercial banks per se that they don't know the overall situation so the, the one of the responsibility of the central bank as well to uh, communicate them uh, what are the current developments and uh, if there are any uh, systemic risk is there because that commercial banks actually they are working uh, with their own interest not based on the overall system but uh, being the regulatory authority that central bank is having the responsibility uh, of the overall system so these type of meetings are really really important and at that time, central bank can uh, propose that if you are not going to follow these uh, actions, that as a whole, that uh, all the banks will be in trouble. Like these meetings help the central bank to maintain a close dialogue with the banking community and convince them about benefits of designing their operations by taking overall macro, macro picture into account rather than being too bias towards only micro approach taking only institutional interest that what i described uh, and the other thing is that central bank that here you now so far we saw that there are different type of uh, instruments are under the disposal of the central bank and the monetary policy uh, but uh, it doesn't mean that uh, central bank is using only one measure at a time like central bank normally use the combination combination of about tools because the central bank basically uh, when central bank changed the uh, monetary policy stance uh, changed the policy interest rates bank interest rate and ssr okay then that central bank used the open market operations to maintain the uh, market conditions uh, towards that policy uh, policy stance or in with that we discussed so far so that we can see that uh, in overall not on, that these all the instruments are uh, using as a combination okay so rather than using one tool at a time or one in a place of the other so that uh, it is like that that uh, uh, at the same time many instruments are implementing uh, what combination combination is used depend on the priority of the monetary management at the time of policy policy inter intervention but we can say sometimes that policy interest that when the central bank is going to change the policy stance sometimes that uh, central bank will change only the policy interest policy rates not the bank rate or the ssr likewise that we can see uh, in the history of changing the monetary policy measures that we can see uh, time to time that 
that here, the last time that we saw that uh, policy interest rates were changed, bank rates and SSR, the, everything changed. But time, time to time that we can see that sometimes only uh, some of the uh, instruments have been used. Okay. Uh, it is like that. And uh, the next thing is that, uh, the next one, that uh, after central bank uh, decide what is the policy, central bank stance is the next very, next thing is to uh, publish the decisions. Okay, so it is actually uh, 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 defined as a forward guidance because once central bank changed the monetary policy stance that the, it, it actually signals the economic agents. Uh, so it is called the forward, it is giving kind of a forward guidance when the central bank uh, announce the monetary policy stance. So it is actually that uh, kind of a, a policy plan, near future policy plan of the country. So the central bank provide information about its future monetary policy intention based on its assessments of the outlook for price stability. Okay, give me a minute. Okay, can central bank provides information about this future monetary policy intention based on its assessment of the outlook for price stability. So in the that here you can see the press release uh, issued by the, this is the latest press release issued by the central bank. Okay, so uh, the date is 19th uh, uh, yeah, August, okay, so that uh, that it is a lengthy one here i just uh, show you only the uh, uh, first page of it half of the first page actually so that uh, in the coming discussions that we are going to closely uh, analyze this press release uh, because it is a, a kind of a turning point in the monetary policy stance in the uh, recent past so that you better have a clear idea uh, about that so in that policy uh, press release that you can see uh, central bank inform okay the central bank is going to change the monetary policy stance and also provide the information huh? that uh, yeah I, I will go to the full page then you will see uh, where it is i will show you the full document Anyway, we have to analyze this uh, in detail later. Let me check where yeah, that is that. I hope that you can see it now. So you can see here that, uh, okay, so first central bank is telling uh, what, what is the global economic aspects and uh, the, the developments in the global perspectives. And also then central bank describes uh, what is actually happening at domestic level uh, that uh, here, basically that uh, based on the information about the situation of COVID-19 actually and also then central bank uh, 
uh, see that uh, central bank uh, give uh, some information about the uh, market uh, conditions as well and also some external sector conditions as well so that uh, possible pressure on inflation so this is basically based on the forecast and forecast of inflation and also uh, the latest inflation index so that central bank can foresee that there is a inflation repression pressure on inflation so that's why uh, see that here you can see the, this is kind of a fan chart that uh, I have I, I saw that uh, in one of the uh, past paper uh, that they have uh, given this kind of a, uh, actually this kind of a picture uh, it is actually uh, from the press release on uh, monetary policy so that's why that you have you better uh, read this and try to understand so that's how that central bank then only that first central bank has to give uh, central bank try to give information to the uh, public uh, about the situation economic situation and the conditions of the country and also not only the domestic uh, conditions but also the uh, the external uh, situation as well and there can be some uh, impact uh, on the domestic conditions so based on this central bank is going to change the monetary policy decision likewise the central bank is announcing the uh, monetary policy uh, stance so that uh, basically uh, central bank take monetary policy decisions uh, on frequency basis at uh, yeah i think uh, eight times per year in normal conditions so this is the way central bank announced this uh, monetary policy to the public so that we can see that you know that what is the uh, objective yes dilan is the free monetary policy review yeah yes Every uh, yeah, pardon. What is the frequency they publish? What is the frequency? Uh, that that eight times is there at the beginning of the year. Actually, in the roadmap of the central bank, also central bank mentioned that uh, eight times per year. Actually, that is a normal uh, routine. But sometimes that we can see during the pandemic also two weeks that in between that central two bank weeks. has. No, 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 not not like that. So, okay, let me check that here. Uh, this is the last one, okay. And then at the end of this, uh, uh, end of this uh, note, uh, it will it it mention actually the next one is on fourteenth October. Okay, so that in the on fourteenth October again, central bank is going to uh, announce. If there is no any change in the monetary policy, even that central bank is going to announce that monetary policy stance, and uh, even central bank is not going to change. That central bank has to tell the public why it is not going to change. If it is going to be changed, again central bank has to tell what are the reasons for uh, for the change in the monetary policy stance. In the same way, if the central bank is not going to change, if the the same uh, policy measures are going to be prevailed in the future as well. Even central bank has to describe why it is, why we are not going to change the interest rate and all. Okay, so the next one is on uh, 14th October. If you go to the uh, roadmap of the central bank, that you can see that all the uh, uh, dates, that uh, the regular uh, statement dates of the monetary policy. Okay, so that uh, in normal circumstance that there should be eight. Okay. In one year. So the dissemination of... Uh, yes. Yes. Dissemination of policy decision is a key method of uh, uh, containing inflation expectation. Uh, 
so it is actually a very important thing to declare this because why that uh, because we know that uh, uh, we already discussed in the class that uh, that inflation expectation because people expect that always that people behave with kind of expectation so that uh, they expect their expectation uh, again will impact on the market situation as well okay if they expect that there is a inflation in the near future definitely there will be a inflation okay so it is like that that's why that central bank give some forward guidance by by uh, uh, announcing this actually central bank is giving kind of a forward guidance then they can uh, they can because that they are that economic agents behavior are actually expectation expectations driven so that's why this is kind of this is considered as a forward guidance this helps people to expect the near future that they can think that if there is a, that they that we that uh, if you know there is a increasing trend in the inflation that people will get panic if the central bank is not going to take any measure okay so any not not going to change anything that that inflation is further increasing it will further increasing so that is what the expectation of the people so accordingly people take their decisions okay so that's why that a proper time that central bank to give guidance forward guidance to the public so likewise that uh, it always help the uh, people to take their decisions that's why central bank now has enhanced its communication policy over the years forward looking policy or greater driven so always that all that you if you go to the uh, central bank website you can see uh, how many press releases are there there are so many uh, press releases or the public announcements are there so basically that no one is now normally we know that uh, ordinary people are not uh, always visiting the central bank website but the purpose is when the central bank issue press release that uh, that media uh, people that they follow these press releases and they uh, disseminate the message to the public that's how it is happening okay so you can go and read this press release so anyway in the class that we are going to discuss about that okay so here that we can see the monetary policy impact on the financial markets the uh, financial sector is the initial contact point of monetary policy implementation although expectation can also have an uh, immediate impact now we discussed that right when central bank uh, announced the uh, policy stance that uh, it also change uh, uh, it also help change uh, expectations of the people for some extent but uh, when the central bank is going to implement the uh, monetary policy tools that we can see uh, that these policy measures are working through the financial sector okay so that the financial sector is the initial contact point of monetary policy implementation financial sector we know that it is a very broad concept here financial sector when we take the financial sector there are different type of uh, uh, entities are there the, as we discussed that uh, uh, that uh, that financial institutions are there financial markets are there the financial markets the money markets are there the short term money markets and also the uh, what that capital market is there like that there are different segments but uh, in overall that uh, first that uh, monetary policy uh, implications are uh, on the financial sector central bank's monetary policy action and real economic activity is linked through the financial markets uh, here this is a very uh, valid point here that uh, we can see that uh, when that we know that what are the uh, policy actions of the central bank now okay the under the monetary policy what are the policy actions central bank change the uh, manage the liquidity level so by doing so central bank can the central bank try to uh, maintain the uh, interest rate at a 
particular level in line with the uh, policy interest rates okay so that these are actually coming to the real market you know what is the real economic activity means that real market means that good and service markets or the real estate uh, like that so that uh, we know first it is going to impact on the financial market uh, what investment saving and all okay but then it is going to impact on the real economic activity and demand and supply of good and services okay so that uh, can you understand that point how it can be transmitted because that uh, when you 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 have some uh, amount of money okay so that uh, what you are going to do with your money whether you are going to spend all the money whether you are going to save so it is actually depend on what okay if you are a rational person that if you know uh, what is the real value of the money or what you can do with the money whether you can invest or whether you can save or whether you can postpone your consumption uh, because that because of the market interest rate is now high so you are going to save your money uh, so that you can have a higher return in the future so you can have more money than you have today likewise that if you if you are going to uh, respond to the interest rate okay in the financial markets then it will impact on your uh, activities which are related to the real market as well okay so and also that when there is a very low in, uh, interest rate we can see that borrowings uh, will increase so what will happen that the spending will spending also will increase investments also will increase likewise that we can see that uh, the real sector of the economy will boost okay if the interest rates are uh, yes interest rates are getting lower and lower okay not when this interest rates are high when the interest rates are low it it can happen okay so that if the interest rates are really high the other way will happen uh, under normal circumstances the central bank conduct their monetary policy operations through transaction in the money market and the foreign exchange market okay so that we know already without the central bank's presence presence conditions in the money market could be quite volatile so that we can see uh, because that's a, when central bank is not going to intervene to the market uh, that uh, the interest rate or the market rate money market rates and uh, even in the exchange rate market also that the rates will purely uh, <clears throat> determined by the uh, supply and demand forces okay so that the central bank is always try to uh, minimize the volatilities in these markets okay if the central bank intervention is not there uh, we can see that money market conditions will be highly volatile. The central bank presence in the money market help facilitate a smooth functioning of the money market or otherwise that it is very difficult for the uh, players to take their decisions. If the market rates are highly volatile, that uh, it is very difficult for them to take their decisions whether this rate will go up or down in the next, next time. So they cannot uh, have, they cannot actually do their predictions. So they cannot uh, determine what will be the real value of the return in the future because rates are going up and down. So it is very difficult to determine or that uh, predict the market conditions in the future. So that's why it is not good uh, to have a, a smooth functioning of the money market. <clears throat> Central bank uses its special position in the money market to influence money market conditions. Uh, that central bank is act, actually at a very special position because that's you, you, you saw that how the central bank can directly or indirectly influence the market interest rate by open market operations 
by changing the uh, volume of liquidity that central bank can intervene uh, to the level that central bank can change the uh, level of liquidity as well as influence the interest rate and also by setting up the uh, interest rate as well that central bank can indirectly influence the uh, not indirectly actually but uh, it is the role is passive but central bank can uh, in, the influence the short term interest rate central bank uses its special okay that we discussed an ability to influence reserve balances held at the central bank by commercial bank to meet their reserve requirements or settlement obligation so see that it is the it is uh, relating to the ssr okay so that we can see that other than uh, doing open market operations even setting up that ssr central bank can uh, influence the money market conditions okay so that uh, then we have to discuss about the monetary transmission mechanism so already that we saw that when the central bank uh, change the interest rate or uh, central bank conduct the monetary operation uh, operations that it influence the uh, money markets okay but uh, how this uh, monetary policy implementation process is going to transmitting and going to impact on the real sector of the economy uh, at the beginning of our discussion we saw that uh, that aggregate demand the link between the money aggregate demand and inflation so now we have to check what are the channels actually that uh, the transmission uh, process is happening and also the time uh, period taken for this process is identified as lags in the monetary policy uh, transmission mechanism uh, it means that uh, it is not going to happen overnight but it takes some time so it is called the lag effect the transmission take place through multiple channels interest rate channel wealth channel exchange rate channel bank lending channel these are basically the common channels that uh, we can see in textbooks also uh, when they describe the monetary transmission mechanism uh, the impact of monetary policy on the real sector uh, varies from economy to economy depending on the structure of the economy and the level of sophistication of the financial sector so you can understand that when the market linkages are really really strong that we can see if something happen in one market it is going to impact on the other market very soon okay so that and also the sophisticated if there is a way that all the markets are linked uh, uh, yeah, that uh, let's say that there is a, a digital platform is there for all the markets to link and share all the information very efficiently that uh, whatever the changes in the market uh, one market is going to uh, impact on the other market because why that information there is no information asymmetry so that it is very easy for the other people in the other market also to see the changes in the because that all the markets are interconnected so that uh, that uh, but uh, in order to happen that uh, first thing is that uh, the structure of the economy whether that uh, how the sectors are interlinked and also the uh, that technology uh, and also that uh, institutional uh, aspects are also there some regulatory uh, mechanism and all all are there uh, these all are together uh, determine the uh, uh the what how much that uh, the impact is strong and how uh, easily that it will work the degree of sensitivity of economic agents to changes in poli policy environment also affect the e efficiency of the monetary policy to, to tame inflation to maintain price stability uh, this is highly important thing uh, the sensitivity of economic agents if we are not uh, sensible if you are if we are, if you are not going to respond to the policy changes in the economy so 
it is very difficult no because that uh, that even though that we have to experience it uh, in real when that all the uh, market transmission mechanisms have been uh, in place but at the same time when the central bank announced the monetary policy if we have sense of that if we are going to react accordingly that the impact it has a big impact actually it can uh, actually accelerate the impact impact and when that central bank uh, tied up the monetary policy uh, telling that there is a inflationary pressure in the country okay when central bank uh, published that okay published that so that news is available to the public now so then how the people are going to take it that they that they believe that okay we can see that there is an inflation to trade this there but in the future uh, there is no that much of a high inflation because that already central bank has taken measures to uh, tame inflation so likewise that people has to respond then only uh, that uh, process will be more efficient okay so but uh, basically we can see that in developing countries that uh, people are more sensitive for almost all the macroeconomic variables inflation interest exchange rate and all but uh, in developing countries that we can see only few segments of the economy are reacting to those changes basically the producers and investors not the consumers but that consumers they also have a very big role to play because always their behavior is again influencing the producers and also investors investors so that you can uh, just imagine the impact then okay so that the that financial literacy is important in that respect why that people should know how to read those uh, macroeconomic variables what is the uh, what is the basically what is the re relationship between the interest rate and the inflation okay so that they should know how their consumption pattern should be changed accordingly that they should have that understanding to check the real value of the money uh, taking into account the inflation and the interest rate so if they don't know those fundamentals that we cannot expect that people will respond to the policy changes okay so the next thing so that uh, we are discussing about the uh, monetary transmission mechanism so i told you that there are multiple channels so the first one is the interest rate channel uh, this channel is considered as the traditional channel which focus on the cost of fund the interest rate uh, okay so the market interest rate fall okay uh, increase the expenditure market inter because of that policy uh, that there is the expansionary monetary policy so in an expansionary expansionary monetary policy what the central bank is doing that central bank set the uh, policy rates at low levels so accordingly uh, the market interest rate start to fall so when the market interest rate start to fall what will happen increase the expenditure and investment why that uh, that interest rate is low now okay so that we are not going to keep deposits in the bank because the returns are low and also for the investors that they can borrow and invest because that uh, cost of fund is also low so that this both components are come under the aggregate expenditure side so it is associated with the aggregate demand so the aggregate demand increase when you are going to spend more and more so what will happen that aggregate demand increases we discuss in the first place under this uh, topic so that we can see the aggregate demand increase so what will happen that uh, in a situation we are uh, we have to boost the economy that central bank can follow expansionary monetary policy like we do uh, like we did uh, during the pandemic uh, situation okay 
the monetary policy can influence the interest rate directly by adjusting the policy base on the recommendation of the monetary policy committee that you already know what it is that uh, that the uh, uh, by uh, conducting the monetary policy that uh, the central bank can influence the interest rate uh, by changing the policy rates so that uh, these changes are actually based on the monetary policy committee but the decision is taken by the monetary board that you have to remember that alternatively it can conduct upon market operation which impact the interest rate indirectly uh, it can conduct open market operation so that it is that we already discussed that direct and indirect so that uh, here that the other way around actually so interest rate indirectly by mechanism it should be indirectly actually so because no we better we better not to have these two terms here it will uh, contradict with some of the points that we discussed earlier uh, because i use the direct and indirect uh, terms uh, uh, to introduce you uh, the other that uh, I use the indirect term to introduce the uh, monetary policy tools but other than that we discuss about the uh, credit limits and interest rate ceiling and all as the uh, direct uh, tools so I be better not to use these words here so otherwise it will confuse you uh, later when you are going to read this again okay so the monetary policy can influence the interest rate by adjusting the policy rate based on the recommendation yeah even we now need this one okay because that uh, not only based on the recommendation of the committee but also with the approval of the uh, monetary policy as well so alternatively it can conduct open market operation which impact the interest rate uh, here you you have to understand that open through the open market operation that central bank can uh, change the uh, volume of liquidity in the market so that it will again impact on the interest rate this is how it works that we discussed right and the wealth channel so this is the second uh, transmission channel one of the main function of the money is a store of value uh, expansionary under uh, under expansionary monetary policy uh, that uh, there are more money is available in the system now so what the people will do that uh, people will demand for more and more assets okay when we have more money that we are going to invest in assets even you can go and buy some jewelries likewise because that you have some extra money uh after that you uh, meet your consumption needs that you can invest in assets uh, then what will happen in the asset or the real mark real market that you can see the asset prices tend to rise okay so that uh, the same thing happened uh, during the pandemic scenario as well that we saw that most of the uh, uh, almost all the countries that they uh, started to uh, uh, conduct expand very highly expansion in monetary policies in their countries so that more money were there available for the people so that uh, uh, we experienced that uh, that that what has happened to the uh, the gold price the in the world market also that we can we, we, we saw that there was a substantial increases there because of that many people that they just wanted to uh, uh, that uh, the store they are valid that one of the function of the money is the store of value so they just wanted to store the the value of money in form of the asset okay so that that's how that demand for asset increases when demand for asset increase in the market we know that when demand increases at that time prices also in, increases if there is no uh, commensurate supply increase at the same time that uh, supply is not increasing so that price can increase increase the wealth of asset holders so how that already that people are there with more and more gold in as their assets so how they feel that they feel very rich because they have more and more that their value of the asset is now increasing 
not only the gold there can be some other real assets also so that uh, when in the market asset prices are increasing let's say that you have lands okay you have two three lands that you have invested in lands so now when the land prices are increasing what is the feeling that you have you feel that you are rich so there is a tendency for you to spend more money because of that uh, uh, wealth of asset holders that they, they the wealth of asset is increasing so that's why people think that they are more rich now so they can uh, spend more on their consumption so the consumption is a part of the aggregate demand so uh, both output and prices tend to rise so this is how uh, uh, under expansion in monetary policy uh, it will increase the aggregate demand okay so that it will increase the inflation rate. exchange rate channel in a freely floating exchange rate regime exchange rate respond to differences in interest rate as well uh, that I hope that you know the relationship between the exchange rate and the interest rate let's see okay that uh, if there is an expansionary monetary policy uh, when the interest rate goes down okay uh, returns from assets dominated in uh, re re returns from asset denominated in domestic currency tend to fall and foreign assets become relatively attractive which means that our domestic interest rates are now very low so if let's say that there are let's see that uh, let's assume that there are foreign investors are there who have uh, invested in uh, domestic currency assets okay so that what will happen to the return that the return that they, they are not willing to invest in uh, the assets uh, don uh, denominated in that means that rupee valued assets okay so because why that they know that they, they, they can have very uh, low return so they are going to take their investments back to their country the foreigners and also the locals that they know the domestic interest rates are really low but uh, in foreign countries if they are going to invest in a foreign country or in, well, instead of uh, invest in uh, the government treasury bills here that if they can uh, invest in other countries sovereign bond that it, the rate is uh, high compared to the domestic level so that they can have more return so that they will invest in another country so we can see what will happen that forex outflow means that uh, US dollars outflow is there from our country therefore that uh, the US dollars outflow so then what will happen both foreign and local investors tend to convert their domestic in the domestic uh, currency into foreign currency so the exchange rate of domestic currency with the foreign currency rises or the domestic currency th tend to depreciate hope that you have the I, I hope that i have to just assume that you have the basic idea about the exchange rate uh, and also what will happen when there is a low and high demand for the uh, foreign currency and all so here you can see that now uh, in the domestic market foreign exchange market that most of the uh, us that uh, that uh, investors that they are going to convert their assets that uh, they are going to leave the country okay because that investors they don't want to invest in the domestic market because in the uh, the re returns for the domestic uh, denominated assets are now low okay so that's why they have to uh, sell the assets and they convert them to the uh, foreign currency means the us dollar so that there is a higher demand for the us dollar okay higher demand for the us dollar uh, so then what will happen then if there is a higher demand for us dollars compared to the rupee so that foreign exchange rate is going up and up in the uh, domestic foreign exchange market which means that rupee is getting depreciated so depreciation re depreciation result in shift in demand for domestically produced goods and services by way of discouraging imports that that is what happening actually in the country 
right yesterday also i think you may uh, heard in the news that uh, that uh, politicians were arguing arguing uh, on uh, about the import restrictions and nowadays that we can see that we also have to shift our demand to the domestically produced goods instead of imported good because why the one reason is that imported goods are going to be highly expensive because that rupee value is that the rupee has been depreciated and also there can be some restrictions over the imports and uh, but also that uh, the importers it is really good because why that if we can uh, export that they can have more and more dollars because that uh, the that rupee has depreciated now. so whatever the amount that they are getting that it has a very good when they are going to sell something in the US, international market that they can earn uh, foreign exchange when they are going to convert into rupee that they can have more and more rupee so they 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 can have more and more income so we can see that both these aspects okay uh, influence the aggregate demand and prices to rise this is the exchange rate channel and then what is the next next is the bank lending or credit channel the ex when, when there is a expansion of monetary policy again that we can see uh, money supply is high now there are more uh, that uh, volume of liquidity in the market is high uh, so the bank tends to receive more deposits because that people have more money so that they are tend to deposit enabling bank to increase lending so that bankers lending capacity also increased because that they, the depositors are depositing money so the banks can lend more so the credit expansion is there okay so that lending is expanding so what will happen then encourage household and farms to expand both consumption and investments so when money more and more money is available so if, even they can use that money uh, to cons consume or even they can deposit so using the deposits the banks can lend so that investment will increase both again impact on aggregate demand to rise this is the uh, the other channel uh, so as i told that uh, there are there can be some another channels as well but uh, i just wanted to discuss about these three four channels because then you can have a kind of idea in case that you have to uh, explain how the monetary policy changes will impact on the uh, other markets then you can tell this is the way that this is the way how it is going to be impact on the other uh, segments of the economy uh, the importance of those channels to explain the impact of monetary policy on the real sector varies from the economy to economy i think the same sentence that we uh, discussed earlier uh, that we saw the different way of transmitting this uh, uh, monetary policy changes into the real uh, sector but it it is again uh the way the that the magnitude and also the time lag it is depending on the structure of the economy and the level of the sophistication of the financial sector uh the impact of all those channels empower the monetary trans transmission mechanism at di different degrees so it is like that we cannot say that all the channels are work at the same magnitude it it is different because that we can see that different type of uh, markets are interact here so not only one single market in different different channels that we can see different markets are involved in the process so based on the level of market sophistication and all and also the structures of the market and the level of developments of the markets that the transmit that the magnitude of that transmission can be changed Uh, the limitations of monetary policy so what are the limitations of monetary policy the importance and the degree of effectiveness of monetary policy decisions vary from nation to nation depending on the following facts it is also very interesting fact degree of development of the banking and financial system and their sophistication that's what we discussed while ago the same point here 
degree of sensitivity of economic agents to change in policy environment this is also we discussed how much that we are responsive or respond to the policy changes by changing our the expenditure behavior and also the way that we are going to respond uh, on interest rate changes and all increase of ssr is not effective when there is an excess liquidity in banks this is also very uh, interesting point even the central bank is use the ssr uh, it is that ssr is actually you know we statutory reserve requirement that we saw how the central bank control the credit cre creation process of the uh, how central bank can limit the credit creation process of the commercial banks by changing the ssr okay even though central bank increased the ssr if there is an excess liquidity in the banks that they can create money uh, based on that liquidity so that we can see it is not along will give that much of impact so it is there and also limitations so, and also the one thing that uh, and the money multiplier impact also there there okay so that uh, uh, because i'm not sure whether i uh, described that uh, to you that uh, basically that in 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 the credit creation process that velocity of money and also that money multiplier uh, is also important uh, elements in the process so i hope that under the money and monetary policy subject you will learn uh, the, it is little bit technical you to explain uh, without having the numeric example and all but uh, that the credit creation process is uh, there are different other factors are there so that uh, by only changing the ssr we cannot guarantee that the central bank can uh, change the uh, or that uh, uh, control the uh, commercial banks uh, possibility of credit creation so there are some other factors as well and the next one is limitation to implement the monetary policy when government runs a budget deficit so that uh, that we know that uh, government run budget uh, when there is a we know that this is also a very uh, bit of a uh, critical point but uh, that uh, government runs a budget deficit so recently we faced that situation in the country as well so at the time that central bank has to conduct the monetary policy uh, sorry not the monetary policy that on behalf of the government that central bank uh, conduct uh, tb auctions and all that you know uh, and also that at that time that uh, the way that central bank is going to invest on tree bills and all are there also the way that central bank where the government is going to uh, finance that uh, budget deficit is also going to uh, impact on the influence of the monetary policy in an unfavorable manner okay that is it is what it is so that when the central bank is uh, having a contradictory monetary policy at that time uh, if central bank has to inject money into the system that it will contradict with the uh, prevailing monetary policy stance it's like that okay so the last slide uh, the challenges in monetary policy implementation several constraint uh, hinder the effective monetary policy conduct and implementation as we discussed in earlier the earlier slide impact of government fiscal policy uh, position on monetary conditions mm, it is another one uh, the other one is that uh, okay better describe uh, by few sentence so uh, okay so sometimes that we can see that uh, the monetary policy is actually uh, conducted by the central bank 
being the monetary policy policy authority that fiscal fiscal policy is by whom the government okay that uh, that uh, if the fiscal policy is uh impact on increasing the level of money supply let's say that uh, the the government is decided to uh, give some new that uh, they are going to give some new recruitments so they are going to uh, appoint new people in a state's job so that government need to spend more money so likewise that suddenly that increase of the the government expenditure in case even that if the government decided to give some uh, subsidy for the people uh, or even for other kind of government expenditures are there uh, we are can increase the uh, money supply so at the same time if the central bank is conducting a contradictory monetary policy that you can see these two policies are contradict with each other so that what it is impact of government fiscal position on monetary condition so at a time that uh, uh, in a condition where central bank needs to uh, uh, cut the money supply okay to absorb money from the market but at the same time if the government is going to uh, conduct a fiscal policy they are it is going to increase the government expenditure means that money supply will increase so that uh, central bank cannot expect the results as uh, plan by implementing the monetary policy external sector pre pressures and vulnerability it is also there that uh, sometimes we know that even though central bank predict the level of inflation and also accordingly central bank conduct the monetary policy but sometimes that some uh, external factors are there uh, which can influence the overall price level in a higher magnitude like oil price changes and also sometimes that uh, uh central bank uh, that uh, sometimes for uh, that here we can see that operations in the foreign exchange market as well uh if central bank has to uh, intervene to the foreign exchange market in order to maintain uh, the stability in the external sector again that it can be contradict with the monetary policy uh stance as well uh that here you have to understand one thing that uh, when that uh, we didn't discuss about the intervention of the central bank in the foreign exchange market uh, but uh, we know that central bank i i can't remember whether we discussed it in the class uh, you know that uh, that one of the responsibility of the central bank is to uh, maintain the price stability under the price stability Uh, that we know that uh, uh, external value of the rupee is also there, which means the exchange rate of stability. So, if there is any volatility in the exchange market, that central bank buy or sell foreign uh, exchange. So, in case that central bank is going to uh, inject US dollar, okay, if there is a pressure on the exchange rate to increase. at uh, where the rupee is started to depreciate at that time uh, central bank uh, has to uh, sell us dollars okay so to make available more and more dollars in the market uh, so at that time that central bank has to absorb money the rupee currency okay rupee so in the same way uh, sometimes central bank has to Uh, by us dollars so at that time central bank has to inject rupee into the market so it can be uh, there is a impact on the uh, uh, volume of liquidity in the market okay so that's what so that sometimes there can be some contradictions in between the uh, uh, the targets of this Uh, markets exchange rate markets and also the domestic money market and the next thing is long uh, lags in monetary transmission that we 
already saw how the transmission mechanism work and we know that there is a lag effect is there so if there are long legs that uh, it is actually challenging uh, for the uh, central bank to uh, uh, achieve the ultimate outcome okay the diversity asymmetry of monetary policy counterparts it is also there sometimes we know that uh, it can be the information asymmetry or that uh, when the counterparts are not convergent that they are diversifying so that we cannot see that uh, market linkages are there so that we know that uh, the market structure is also very important as well as the sophisticated level sophistication level of the market as well so those are the degree of competition in the banking sector so that we know when uh, we discuss about the uh, overnight markets that we can see that uh, it is also a fact that can influence the short term interest rate among the, uh, in the markets ultimate uh, untimely events impact of covid on traditional monetary policy implementation so that we saw that uh, normally that uh, monetary policy is actually that we know that uh, uh, at uh, uh, at the beginning of a year that uh, all the monetary policy authorities that they predict the future and accordingly they design but if there is any unprecedented event happen like covid that it is really challenging because sometimes that all the uh, conventional policy measures or the instruments are not going to give the uh, best results sometimes that uh, monetary authorities that they have to implement some extraordinary measures or the un that uh, unconventional measures to uh, address the issues due to such untimely events so this is also kind of a challenge so in the coming that uh, lessons that we are going to discuss about uh, the some of the challenges that monetary policy authorities had to face due to covid pandemic and also during the covid uh, uh, scenario what kind of uh, uh, special policy measures have been taken by the central bank and all okay so that's what i wanted to discuss under the mon topic of monetary policy so we could uh, finish uh, all the points that i want to discuss with you so any problem hope that you all are up uh, any question or otherwise that we can conclude okay i think i think there is no any yeah what is the yeah ma'am uh, monetary policy introduce what 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 you ask that what is the year means that monetary policy introduced in sri lanka ah uh, uh, you know when the central bank established right so yeah since the establishment of the central bank that we can see that uh, mon the monetary policy it was there but uh, not in that the, there are some differences actually we can see during the process there there are many development uh, are there uh, during the process so far uh, i think i have mentioned it in the note also that uh, i provided you a note so in the note also that we have mentioned that let me check with i have mentioned here in the earlier slides so were you there last week no ma'am i would yeah i think i mentioned that point as well so at yeah at what time that central bank uh, changed the uh, monetary policy framework and all that uh, we discussed last week so you better uh, the, the the recordings are there no that with the cbsl so there is a, a possibility for you to uh, listen to the lecture recordings so you better go and listen and then you will uh, you will see okay so other than that uh, any more questions
okay so if there are no more questions so we can stop uh, by here so thank you all thank you everyone so we are going to meet again on next saturday the same time